The Swedish Navy is facing an interesting challenge. The time is right to see him some of the power he has due to defensive cuts over the last few decades. While the number of ships in the fleet has decreased significantly since 1980, Sweden has modern stealth corvettes, updated mine hunters, and is building a new class of submarines. Through its industrial partners, construction of two new A26-class submarines has begun, and designs are already underway for the Swedish Navy's next-generation stealth vessel family. On the 16th of August, 2017, the Swedish government announced improvements in defense from 2018 onwards related to its perception of the changing security situation in the region. In addition to the $60 million investment in spring 2017, the budget was also amended with an additional $323 million per year through 2018 to further expand defense capabilities. Speaking at a press conference on 22nd November, Rear Admiral Jens Nykvist, Chief of Staff of the Royal Swedish Navy, said that international naval activity in the Baltic Sea, in terms of defense of its long and exposed eastern coastline, had increased. They call it a complicated environment in which to operate. Rear Admiral Jens Nykvist, former commander of the 15-year subsurface submarine HSWMS Gotland, at the start of bilateral exercises with the U.S. Navy's Anti-Submarine Warfare Force in 2005, he said he couldn't remember the last time due to the large number of warships in the Baltic Sea. Most are national exercises supported by U.S. submarines as well as international special operations forces. This exercise is called Aurora 2017, which focuses on the island of Gotland and the area north of Stockholm, as well as the implementation of the North Coast exercise in 2017. NOCO is a multinational exercise for NATO, the Partnership for Peace, and European Union countries that has been held annually in 2007 in the Baltic region. This year was particularly busy, managed by the Swedish Navy, and involving 50 ships from various countries. The exercise included the HSWMS Karlskrona patrol vessel, as well as two Visby-class stealth corvettes. HSWMS Karlstad and HSWMS Hernesend also participated in this exercise, which provided an opportunity to test the operational capabilities of the new Finnish or Swedish Navy. We see the growing importance of this region, but also uncertainty, said Rear Admiral Jens Nykvist, mostly pointing to the Russian presence from Kaliningrad and St. Petersburg, Petersburg, where the country gets about 40% of its imports. He said that Russian naval activity had increased in the Baltic Sea, a small area that sees between 2,000 and 4,000 ships in the region at any given time. The Baltic Sea is characterized by being very shallow, with an average depth of about 65 meters, as well as a rocky seabed on the western side, which gives way to a sandier bottom towards the coast of mainland Europe, making it a challenge for submarine operations. In addition to protecting maritime sovereignty, the Swedish Navy also addresses economic factors, such as pollution and overfishing, along with the significant threat from mines. It is estimated that there are still around 50,000 mines left in these waters from the end of the 19th century until the Second World War. Mine sweeping is a routine task carried out by many countries in the region. Sweden's defense posture aims to create a threshold effect, balancing military capabilities with the availability of forces and international cooperation. We have high availability in the Navy. We are professional, and we are out there to show how we operate," said Rear Admiral Jens Nykvist. The main tasks that are routinely carried out include maritime surveillance and reconnaissance to ensure territorial integrity, protection and sustainability of civil maritime shipping, and finally, coastal defense operations if someone attacks. Sweden's surface and subsurface navy is primarily structured around two corvettes, a naval battle fleet, a submarine fleet, and a mine clearing squadron. 
Crew numbers have been reduced to around 40 personnel on corvettes and 35 submarines, almost all of them professionals. As a result, our personnel take on many responsibilities, although the Swedish armed forces have reintroduced mandatory military service. However, the Navy will largely not participate in this next year. My main mission is to build a threshold of influence for the armed forces, said Rear Admiral Jens Nykvist who currently helps oversee a number of international partnerships involving the Swedish Navy. Maritime surveillance cooperation in the Baltic Sea covers most of the countries bordering the Baltic and focuses on providing common maritime data, increasing situational awareness, and moving towards a safer and more secure maritime region for all its users. There is also a smaller bilateral cooperation, SUCFIS, between Sweden and Finland, as mentioned previously, which has the potential to achieve Initial Operational Capability, IOC, after operational analysis during the NOCO exercise. The ultimate goal is to achieve it by 2023. Another important organization for the Swedish Navy is the Baltic Regulatory Safety Council, a group through which Sweden collaborates with other Baltic states to focus multinational skills and assets to clear the thousands of mines that remain a danger to all maritime users. What next? We already have good scientific capabilities in stealth, and we are very good at it, both from submarine and surface ship prospects. It is very important to remain undetected as long as possible, said Rear Admiral Jens Nykvist. He added that the Navy would probably use two crews for each surface platform to allow the ships to be at sea for longer periods. The Södermanland-class submarines were modernized in 2010 with a service life extension program, essentially making them new submarines. We cut the hull into two pieces and installed additional parts of the Sterling AIP, Air Independent Propulsion System. We have been using this since 1988. This system will also be used on the A-26 class, which will allow us to remain submerged under the sea for weeks, said Rear Admiral Jens Nukvist. Currently, two of the Gotland-class submarines are undergoing mid-life upgrades at the Cockhams facility, within the naval base in Karlskrona, southern Sweden. The upgrade process began in late 2015, and the two hulls were welded back together this summer. Sea trials will begin next year, with delivery expected to be completed by the end of the year. Upgrading Sterling's AIP system to the Mark III version, as well as the combat and submarine management systems, along with antennas and periscopes from Finland, will allow these two submarines to remain operational until 2030. Many of these system upgrades will also be used on the A26-class submarines. However, this process has already helped in reducing risks related to crew training and familiarization with the new system. Initial work has begun on two A26-class submarines, which are being built in parallel. Cockhams gained new life after being acquired by the Saab Group from the German organization in 2014 following a tense situation at the Cockhams shipyard in Malmö, which involved the active participation of the Swedish Defense Materials Administration. Senior Vice President Gunnar Wieslander and Head of Business Area at Cockhams said that following the Saab takeover, it was decided that a complete renovation of the Cockhams facility in Karlskrona would be carried out. This move results in the largest investment in a single location by the Saab Group. The Swedish government is now in a position to reinvest, and in 2015, the Ministry of Defense, through the organization's FMV, Swedish Defense Material Administration, and FOI, Swedish Defense Research Institute, ordered Saab to build two A-26 submarines and upgrade the Gotland class. Mr. Wieslander explained that the development and integration of AIP Sterling into submarines has been at the heart of Cockham's expertise. We have continuous developments in technology. We take known technologies and improve them. We mitigate risk extensively by testing before building, says Wieslander. The Gotland class was the first submarine built with the Sterling AIP system, and this technology will continue to be used on the A-26 class. We work with modular cylinders that we weld together, Weislander continues. 
This makes the modular design more practical when including cylinder sections for different purposes. Although we can still balance the boat, we can add cylinders for greater range and endurance with more fuel and supplies. Or we can add more multiple cabins if more people are needed, and so on. Gotland has been cut in half, and we put 20 new systems identical to the A26 into it, thereby reducing the risk to the A26, which saves the Navy a lot of time and future training and maintenance costs, Wieslander said. Gotland's designs for three types of new A-26-class submarines include a regular ocean version of the A-26, a smaller version called the Pelagic, with less range, and a larger version, the ocean version. Both the Swedish Navy and the Polish Navy will take the standard ocean-going version, while the Royal Netherlands Navy has been offered a version with a more extended range. However, all versions will be tailored to customer requirements, with weight differences ranging from 2,200 to 3,000 tons. Mr. Wieslander explained that building longer submarines would mean adjusting the length to beam ratio, which would require larger cylinder sizes in the production process. We have a special recipe for cooking steel. We are one of the few countries that tests fully loaded submersible submarines with a crew. We have been doing this for decades and are very happy with how steel works. We can cut it and put it back together and it still retains its power. In terms of seeking new business, Cockums has worked closely with Babcock since their collaboration on the Collins class for the Royal Australian Navy. This large version of the Gotland class was also proposed as a replacement for the Collins class. In addition, Cockums has partnered with Damon for the Royal Netherlands Navy's Walrus class replacement tender. Mr. Wieslander expressed Cockham's vision of the next generation of surface ships, which could be provided to replace the Visby class. The ship is designed to offer a low radar cross-section and stealthy infrared signature. The new Corvette will be a larger Corvette than the Visby class and should have surface-to-surface -surface missile capabilities, vertically launched air defense missiles, two guns, anti-submarine torpedoes, as well as variable depth sonar. The ship's hull will be made of steel, with the superstructure made of composite materials, and its weight is expected to be around 2,500 tons. This ship could be a smaller surface combat ship, which can be operated both manned and unmanned. This ship will not use one of the larger weapon systems, Wieslander said, but will have an advanced combat management system capable of detecting small ships with a variety of payloads, such as SSM, surface-to-surface -surface missiles, towing array systems, or torpedoes. These systems will work within a network, which makes them more difficult to detect. That's the beauty of it, Wieslander said. The system can also be connected to new corvettes, as well as to Saab's global control and early warning system, which is based on the Bombardier Global Express 6000 aircraft. We like the look of this, as well as the concept of street fighters that can be used alone or sent in hard-to-defend groups. The Swedish Navy needs to replace two generations of corvettes, and it is Cockham Saab's vision that this need can be met through a larger class of stealth corvettes, working alongside smaller street fighters. This will reduce acquisition costs and risks, while providing mission flexibility for both territorial defense and international applications. We believe that this next generation could be ready between 2025 and 2030 if the decision to proceed is made quickly, added Wieslander. This family of stealth ships is a concept that began more than 10 years ago and has been developed with the involvement of the Swedish Ministry of Defense, the FOI organization, the FMV, as well as the Swedish Navy. However, Providing insight into the future, Beastlander concludes with the observation that autonomous systems will have a major impact on surface and subsurface warfare.